Hello everyone, in today's video uh, we're going to be taking a look at how you can use the out of comms command in order to intentionally simulate the limitations of radio communications. So uh, first things first, uh, let's go ahead and create a home base. So what we're going to be doing here is basically creating a unit and then that unit, if any unit gets too far away from it, it drops out of contact. So we can create some really interesting scenarios with this. So let's go ahead and call this one uh, blue team and then we'll go ahead and grab the other team as well. We'll go and call them red team, why not? Keep it nice and simple. We'll automatically assume these two are going to be hostile to each other. We'll grab this one real quick, throw that one over there too. We'll go ahead and grab red team here. Uh, let's see here, who do we want to pick on today? Uh, we'll go pick on, uh, well, how about Newark here? This seems like a pretty good spot to kind of mess with things. Go ahead and add, uh, let's, uh, I'm just trying to kind of think of a kind of fun thing. Let's see, I think a refinery might be kind of fun. Let's do a couple of oil refineries here. You know, when I think of New Jersey, I think of oil refineries, mostly just because I spent so many times uh, walking through, uh, not walking, I should say, I should say driving through 95 here. So I'm going to go over on this side. I'm going to go ahead and create our own little home base here, which is going to act as our kind of location. There's a Quapin Reservoir, which means I'm none too far away from, the, ah, there it is right there. Let's go ahead and create ourselves an airfield just for the purposes of our handy-dandy demonstration here. Um, this is a gigantic airfield, so I'm actually going to put that one here. We're going to go ahead and call some courses west over AFB. And at Westover Air Force Base, so we're going to go ahead and uh, throw in some F-16CMs because uh, everybody knows that is my aircraft that I do everything to. Let's go ahead and get a group of four of those. Again, this is for the purposes of demonstration, but I think you folks will appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and scoot down here. I'm going to go ahead and get ourselves some uh, GPU-38. Sounds pretty good. Uh, what does that get us for a range, though? We need about 150 miles. Oh, beautiful. Let's make it happen. All right, perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the script that's going to do all the fun work for us. I'll quickly like on pause. So normally what would happen is if I launched all these aircraft, to attack these refineries down here in New Jersey. Uh, they do a great job of it, and we'd be able to keep track of them the whole time. However, in the real world, we actually are, have a very difficult time being able to keep track of where our units are as well as where the enemy is. A lot of uh, fog of war, I guess is what I'm going to call it. So I'm going to create a system of fog of war using a Lua script. So I'm going to go up to editor, I'm going to pop over to Lua script console, and let's do it to it. So basically the way this is going to have to work is it's basically going to have to pull all of the units on our side. Uh, let's say every 30 seconds or so, we'll use that with an event. And then every 30 seconds it's going to scan to see if any unit has exceeded, let's say, a 75 nautical mile range from west of Air Force Base. If it has has, it'll drop it off the communication network. If it has not, or it comes back into 75 nautical miles, it'll throw it back onto the communications network to simulate the fact that we create a mission. We have no idea how things turn out. So let's have some fun with this. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to get all the units that are going to be on our team here. Now, the reason I have to do that naturally is because uh, without them, I'm not going to be able to um, be able to pull through all of them. Obviously, in very large scenarios, I really don't recommend this particular strategy. It's going to get messy real fast. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure that worked real quick. Now print units, go ahead and do a right parenthesis, and it worked perfectly, yes. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our home base. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in, uh, why not center? I will call it, a, we'll make it a local variable. So I'm gonna say local center equals VP get unit. So this is going to be my center object, and this is gonna be the one we're gonna be checking. So I call it Westover Air Force Base. So I'm gonna say no name equals West over, whoops, spell it correctly, be careful here, AFB. All right, perfect. Let's print center just to make sure that works too. I always like to debug as I go. Perfect, yes, this is working, I love it. So now let's go ahead and create a loop that goes through all the units inside of our team here and uh, goes ahead and pulls each one of them individually. So the units do, I'll go ahead and come down here and type an end, okay. So what do we need to do? Uh, the first thing we need to do is determine how far away we are with this particular unit we're pulling against my center point. So that's pretty easy to do. We'll use the, uh, we'll go ahead and create a local variable. We'll call it dist because it just seems to be pretty easy. And I'll use the range tool. Actually, it's tool underscore range, my bad. And I'll go ahead and say v.goid, which remember is the item inside of our list, comma, our center.goid. Remember, the center is going to be the unit that we're actually using here. Go ahead and close that sucker off real quick. Looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and print dist. Again, I just wanna make sure everything's working okay so far here. Uh, we don't need to echo, but I do wanna see the numbers. Perfect. The echo distance is all zero because it's where you're starting from. Nice. It's working so far. Now we need to get logical. So we're now going to say if the distance is bigger than 75 nautical miles, then uh, let's see here. What do we need to do here? First thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tell that unit to uh, drop off the comms grid. Fortunately, there's an easy way to do that. I'm just going to type in send edit. I'll use the set unit command, and we're just going to say GUID equals V.GUID. Remember, this is the th unit that we're looking at right now, comma, and this is a command you might not have seen before. It's actually really, really helpful. Out of comms equals true. 
And all that's going to do is automatically disconnect it from our communications network. We're not going to get any responses back from it. So then I'll say, uh, let's see here, else, well, logically, if um, we are... Um, are less than 75 nautical miles. We want to make sure we are in orbit here or in our communications. So do send edit set unit GUID equals v.guid comma out of comms equals false because we're going to come back into communications if we get close enough. And we're just going to type in an end there. And now we should be in pretty good shape so far. I'm just kind of doing a mental check for my own sanity. And I can see my boo-boo right there. Boo-boo corrected. Okay, before this, we're going to be able to test to see if this works. So let's go up to the editor. Let's go over to our scenario options here. And uh, make sure communications disruption is an option. Otherwise, uh, this isn't going to work. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a unit. Uh, let's put it 83 nautical miles away. We'll go ahead and get a F-16, because, you know, because science. Let's see here, an F-16CM. I'm going to get one of these. I just need this for testing purposes. Looks good to me. Let's go ahead and run the script and uh, see if he drops off our communications network here. Uh-oh, it worked perfectly. Yes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him within 75 nautical miles. Remember, he's still off the communications network. I'll go ahead and press run. And he's back on the communications network. Excellent. So our script works. So let's go ahead and give this a try now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to events real quick. Event editor. We'll go to events. We'll go ahead and create a new event. And we'll uh, check for comms. Check for comms. Make sure this is repeatable naturally. We'll edit triggers. Uh, we're going to do this on a regular amount of time. Uh, usually 15 to 30 seconds is fine. I don't tell people to do every second. That's way too fast. Every 15 seconds. Looks good. Again, the more aggressive you are with this, the slower your scenario will run. So be very cautious with it. So let's go ahead and say every 15 seconds. Uh, edit conditions. Uh, we need to say scenario started. Start. Sounds good. Started. Go ahead and close that one down. Go ahead and add that one in. And now we need to put our Lua script right down here. So grab Lua script. We'll grab all the hard work we did right here. Go ahead and create a new one. Um, check for comms now, Lua. Go ahead and paste that sucker in there and press the OK button. Close that out. We're going to go ahead over here and press out of comms for now, Lua. I'm going to press OK. And I've already goofed up because I forgot to actually add the action. Cool. All set. So that's all set. Our console is all set. We have our thing all ready to rock. Uh, let's just do a quick idiot check here. Make sure this is more than 75 nautical miles. Perfect. Okay, so to test our script here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick strike mission on our little refinery zone here. Uh, strike refinery. That seems pretty good. We'll do a land strike. Look, 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 look. Looks good. Let's go ahead and add all our targets over to this. We're going to say pre planned targets only. Our F-16s are going to do all the hard work here, and everything looks good, looks good, looks good. Let's say radar usage for IP to Winchester. Sounds pretty good to me. I'm not really going to change anything else here. We don't land an off-axis attack. We're just testing things. Now, of course, to make things interesting for us, and again, to make a little bit of variety in our mission here. Let's go ahead and uh, add a simple SAM site here just to make things a little bit more fun for our people coming out here. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and use an SA8. We'll probably use an A model because it's kind of actually, we'll do a B model. You know, why not? We'll make it interesting. Uh, we'll get a Polish B model here. Go ahead and grab that sucker. Go ahead and flip it to this mode. So now it makes things a little bit more exciting for us and a little bit more variety. All right, let's see what happens. Good thing I should probably save to make sure I'm not about to really goof up here, but eh, stuff happens. All right. So uh, every 15 seconds or so, remember, we're pulling to see if there's any unit more than 75 nautical miles away. So usually two and a half minutes exceed, and uh, here comes my F-16. He's just uh, taken off. Oh, we got our buddy here. Oh, look at how nice that plane looks like. You can keep your F-22 and F-35. I'll take one of these. Now, notice uh, we're getting good information here. We're getting immediate information. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my thing. We can watch these guys uh, basically proceeding off the edge of the map. Uh, I mean, if we want to have a little bit of fun one too we could actually come in here and let's go ahead and add a radar oh no that is not my radar of choice i always use a tips 43 that's just me let's go ahead and grab that one real quick i'll go ahead and flip it on so we can keep an eye on what's going on over there if uh, for some reason we lose contact with these guys now let's go ahead and see how far away we are so far 60 so theoretically right when they cross that line or so where they should be too far away to be giving us useful info oh, and they're gone <laughs> Now, where it gets interesting is the units are still there. They've just dropped off of our communications network. So they're not dead. They're just um, invisible temporarily. So this is interesting because if you actually come over here, you'll see the no comm shows itself from all the way over here. There's a flight here. Like we have its flight plan and we actually have a rough idea of when we saw it. And every once in a while, what you'll actually see is you'll see these little yellow blips as they come back into existence and are re-correlated onto the previous units here. So unfortunately for us, um, we're completely in the dark. You know, we just sent our mission and we have no idea what's happening right now. So um, let's, let's hope things are going well here. Speed up time a little bit. Oh, and they're coming back. 
Sweet. Now notice, as soon as they re-entered the communication network, they told us how the battle went. And it looks like, uh, if you take a quick look here, they spotted the SA-8. Uh, they mangled one of the refineries, they mangled another one, they mangled another one. And uh, there's still four of them left. So our mission was a success, and so was our script. Now I think this is a pretty cool script, and you know, I can't wait to be using this more and more. Apparently they fired 12 SA-8s at my F-16 crew here, but my F-16 crew did a great job. And they just told us uh, how much fun they had back down there so hopefully this uh, script helps you out i'll go ahead and i'll post it back up on the little screen here for those of you who kind of missed it a little bit earlier i really wish you could change the uh, size of the font here because that would make things a little bit better all oh, right we can zoom in a little bit control plus boop, 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 boop. Oop, control z there we go so anybody who wants to steal my script here remember you have to put that into that event so that it repeats it every so many amount of times so that it goes ahead and makes it successful now what makes this insanely cool is you can actually design this so there's more than one center unit so you could basically have like a relay airplane like you know an e3 or something like that or the ec-130s i think they're called and uh, use things like that as a way to sort of link everybody together kind of like a data link so this can get crazy other than that enjoy <laughs>